You're at Survive and Thrive, Essential for Women Entrepreneurs Now. And I still want to say, for the recording's sake, Mike King, smartest guy in the room so far. Okay. So this is what I wanted to show you. If you feel like this or this or maybe this, see the phone with the cord? I know it's like a new phenomenon for some people, but all of us on this webinar know what that was like. But mainly I picked this photograph because this is somebody who's, you know, just got off the phone or is hearing some really bad news. And what am I going to do now? And it wasn't long ago. Remember feeling like this, right? We were smiling. We were laughing. We were also just had a sense of, what was true, what we needed to work on, what was more predictable. And it was really much more up to us to figure out the right plan and do the work and to keep at it. This is a day in the life of an entrepreneur before coronavirus, right? You get excited with your business or the new year. Oh, this is hard. My, my gosh, but it's working. It's working. Yay. Someone said, yes, I got a new client. Oh, I screwed. I messed up. You know, then it's this, well, but, okay, I'm still going to go for it. You know, let's go for the good, for, for the great. I think I'm going to go to bankrupt. This is not working at all. Oh my gosh. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I just got to be, I just got to have confidence. All right. Oh gosh. I lost my biggest client. Oh my gosh. got to look huge. I thought for sure they're going to say it. I was so wrong. This is just going to suck. Wait, life is great. I just have a new conversation with a fabulous prospect. In fact, the one who said no came back and said, yeah, we found some money. I mean, that was the life of an entrepreneur as it is anyway, right? Okay. So, um, and we are, yes, as you said, uh, uh, Kelly, in very, very good company. And so then what happens? So we're, you know, we're building a business is already challenging. Then an uninvited guest called Corona shows up. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm having a party and an uninvited guest comes, they ruin the whole thing. Well, I don't want to minimize that, you know, it's, it's real. People are definitely suffering. People are definitely going to the hospital. People are definitely dying. So I don't want to minimize that. Um, you know, a friend of mine said it, this was, we have like the before and after, you know, we have the BC before Corona, and now we have AD after whatever. We had to figure out what the D now stands for. But this has changed, as we know, everything impacted everything, uh, and that is what we are here for today. Now, here's one of my con concerns. One of the facts is that 88% of business owners in the United States make less than two a hundred thousand dollars, and if you increase that to $250,000. The, uh, this is a research study by American Express in 2018 shows that, well, that is 93% uh, of all women businesses in the United States, which by the way, is not a bad number. I just looked at this and I know with a lot of my clients, this is the case. And the thing that concerns me is with that kind of revenue stream and income stream, that also means it's a lot more difficult to have three, four, five months of savings or backup for our business and our personal lives to get through this time period, no matter how long, okay? So it's, it's the thing that I have really been thinking even more of uh, and, and uh, about, my, my clients. And so that's why I wanted to put together this, this webinar to share with you some things that I've been thinking to hopefully get your mojo moving again, to offer you some strategic ideas um, that you may not have considered yet, or maybe not quite in this way. And the whole idea is for you and your business to survive through this Corona virus crisis and hopefully, the idea is if you can survive and by surviving through and figuring out how to thrive in this time, you set you up to thrive even better after this crisis abates. Because it will, it's just we don't know exactly how long and we don't know how it, things will look like for our business and what we'll, what we'll need to do for, for that business to continue. Okay? So, um, 
I, for those of you who don't know anything about me or very little, I wanted to give you a quick, a, a quick uh, understanding of who I am. Um, I have been for the last 25 years um, an entrepreneur, and that was after 10 years in working at AOL when AOL was cool, so we know it was a long time ago because some people don't even know what AOL was, which is fine, all right, but I was, uh, when I joined AOL, I was smack out of college, 23 years old, 120 people in the company. It wasn't even called AOL then, it was called Quantum Computer Services, and over that 10 years, it brought what we know as online services and just being online today to everyone around the world, the very first company to really do that. And everything's been built on since then, including Facebook and Instagram and all the apps that we use today on our phone. Um, and so I'm proud to have been part of that. It, and but then I, after 10 years, I needed to leave. So I, um, I, I, many of you know me as a keynote speaker. I wrote several books. Here's some of them, Bodacious Career, Bodacious Woman, Live Like Your Nail Color. And I started to write and I started to speak and I started to try to inspire women in particular to be more bodacious in charge of their lives, really um, discovering their sanity, their confidence and fun. And, and everything really was about that kind of mindset, but also practical things that you could do. Even started to Live Like Your Nail Color Club. Who knew that might be back? But, you know, we'll, we'll wait for right now. I had a radio show called Girlfriend, We Gotta Talk. Some of you in the Richmond area uh, may have remembered that with uh, my co-host, Susie Galvez. Also, I then, uh, after doing that radio show and interviewing so many women, um, I decided to let's do it in a live setting. So to take boring panels and to make it above and beyond boring panels. This is one that I did with the Greater Richmond Chamber, now called Chamber RVA. Some of you may have attended some of those events. Um, then I decided that after many years, I want to really focus on women entrepreneurs. So about four years ago, I started doing that with one-on-one -on -one coaching for, as a business coach for women entrepreneurs and in small groups. So this is one of the small groups that I was doing. I, did a, I started a workshop based on my presentation skills because I had so many women entrepreneurs say, hey, I want to learn how to really present well. That's a great way to market and share what I know, my expertise. So uh, I decided uh, when everyone went through my power up your presentation workshop of course you got to get a red cape so there you go um i'm also the uh co-host or the host of the power plug podcast which is by sona bank and also by fidelity bank sona bank is in the in virginia fidelity bank is in new orleans and what i get to do is interview some women entrepreneurs in those regions and um help them and share their expertise um that we can all benefit from um, and so that's been a fun thing to do. I've also started um, retreats, and this is one from, you can tell I love Wonder Woman and Red Capes, uh, from last fall that, that we did, and it was called the Rev Up Accelerator Retreat. So this gives you an idea of kind of where I've been, what I do um, now. All of this is to, to help women entrepreneurs throw on their red cape and really rev up their business. That's my whole goal today and my focus today. Do some speaking, do some workshops, do some retreats, but, and, and do a lots of one-on-one -on -one coaching and small group coaching. But the whole aim is so that you, have your, you all have your own red cape, which is how high it's flying. So that's a little bit about me. Let's go back though to today and the situation that we're all in today. And I've really been talking a lot with my clients about um, what they're experiencing, their specific uh, situations, their specific businesses, talking to some colleagues too. And, um, you know, first we have to understand really clearly what are the biggest problems that now this situation with coronavirus um, brings on. And I'm not talking about the health problems. I'm really focused on the impact of this on our businesses and, and how we operate them and how we can generate revenue. And so here's four that I, uh, I want to kind of really hone in on that I think affects all of us but could affect you differently. The first problem is this business model that you have, many of them no longer work like they used to. And they don't, so the problems that you're solving um, and have been solving aren't exactly the same anymore. Um, they might be slightly different, they might be new, but they're just, now the, the, the business model I've had, you know, before coronavirus, BC was one. And now it's just not working the same way. And that is the core of your business is the right model or a model that works for the times. So that's one big problem. 
Um, the second big problem is we can't meet in person. And so this is really impacting people who have gotten a lot of prospects and, uh, and sales and met new people through meeting people in person. And if and it's and, and some people are really flat footed on the technology that they can do for virtual networking or for events. And when I say flat footed, they weren't involved much at all. Some have been involved, but now they have to up their game and, and up their skills in a whole different way. So this thing of not being able to meet in person really has this verberating impact. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. You can imagine when we when events no longer exist in person how that whole industry flattened and even though people were doing many things virtually they it still wasn't the overall the core so this is just one example um i think also by the way extroverts people who are people you know love to be in with people in person get energy from people in person this is really a hard problem um for, for them Problem number three, emotional roller coaster. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Are you angry? You're mad? You're, uh, you're afraid? You're depressed? Um, and it's not just you. It's your clients. It's your colleagues. It's your loved ones that may be confined now to this smaller box that we all are needing to live in and confining ourselves in. So that's no stranger, but it's a problem. Before, there was the up and down of running a business. Now, we add on top of that all this uncertainty of the environment, and it keeps changing, uh, and that it, changed, it keeps it impacting our business. Um, and then, of course, spending has tightened. And, um, you know, duh, this is, this is a big reason why there has been this fast forward of creating and approving of the stimulus package by, um, you know, the, by the federal government and by uh, Congress and, uh, the, and the president, but, um, and also about the SBA, what they have done and what they're doing to reach out because of spending. When the spending stops by a, a consumer level and or business level, a lot of implications for all of us immediately happen. Now, that doesn't mean everyone is pulling back and that people aren't spending money. Just ask, ask Zoom. They have a, had an explosion um, as one company. Just ask, ask, ask Logitech. Logitech happens to be the company that um, I have, I'm using this video on uh, my camera, I mean on my uh, video camera that's plugged into my laptop to create today. Fortunately, I bought it before the last two weeks because they're wiped out when it comes to inventory. So it's not like people aren't spending money and it's not like some companies aren't doing well. Ask the toilet paper companies, right? So this has impacted my business model as well. So this, this is a quick uh, the excerpt from my website. If you, if you go there and you scroll down, you know, here's what I offer in terms of my services to throw on your red cape and rev up your business. Coaching retreats and the Power Plug podcast. Those are three main buckets. Well, coaching... I was doing some in person, let alone, and as well as virtually, one-on-one. On, on one on one. Retreats and workshops, they were all in person. Well, mm, that's going to be a little bit of a problem now, okay? And then the Power Plug podcast. Now, that's one thing that's virtual <laughs> and has always been virtual. So, um, and even the, and the guests that I have interviewed, I've also done virtually. So, it didn't impact that as much. Um, and in fact, Sona Bank and Fidelity Bank, who are really my clients, ultimately, um, to do those podcasts, they are needing some more virtual events. And so I'm working with them to use what I've been doing, um, like here, my skills on Zoom. Um, and, and, and I'll remember the share part really, really well now, Amy. I'll never forget that. But I'm just giving you an example of this impact. This is a, a quick way of showing you how this has impacted my business as well. And, and looking at my business model. So I would like to know which one impacts you the most. So if you would, in the chat box, is it, you know, type in one, two, three, or four. Is it the business model, which is one, can't meet in person is number two. Emotional roller coaster, you can type in the words if you prefer. Um, spending has been tightened. That's uh, number, number four. What, how has it impacted you? Let's go ahead, if you would and just add in and see what people are, are experiencing right now. 
Okay, I'm seeing this. Um, I'm reading somebody's mind. Jolinda, okay, cool. Spending tightened. Yeah, spending tightened is all, all four of them is what I'm hearing and we're all seeing. Yeah, that spending piece really, really is tough in particular. Okay, yeah, can't meet in person mostly. That's what Amy says. Yeah, even if we, you know, like for myself, I've done some things virtually. Um, I'm comfortable with it, but then to go all in completely that way still changes how it feels, how, um, you know, uh, are there new skills I have to learn in that realm? All right, so um, not being able to connect in person, um, spending for media. Yeah, Mike King, I know you have a radio show and people wanting to advertise and being a part of that. Uh, that really we're pulling back on that budget. Um, although I would hope most people, more people would be seeking out audio. I don't know about you, but I'd cut off the TV or minimize that and be more selective about what I, what I'm listening to and trying to do things that are more helpful than not. Okay. Can't meet in person. So I can tell that, um, and we all can see this is, all of this is really impacting, uh, all of us. All right. So, um, let's then look at, um, what might happen? You know, I love this. I, you know, ask yourself uh, when you're unsure, what would Wonder Woman do? Many of you know I'm a lover of Wonder Woman, you know, and I think I, I draw strength from her, both from her, uh, you know, her boldness and her courage, which is a lot uh, in courage you can tap into, you know, kind of from her archetype, from, from her, but also um, she's got some smarts, you know, and she's got um, some compassion, and I love that combination. So what would Wonder Woman do? That's what I've asked myself. And I thought, okay, and as I've talked with my own clients, uh, I've sh I'm sharing with them, with you, what I've kind of come to of all the things we could do, because there's a lot we can. What I think when it comes to our businesses, here's the things um, to, for ourselves to survive and to thrive. And I want, first want to start about our, with our state of being. We are all grieving. We're all grieving. This is the Kubler-Ross grief cycle. You can look up Kubler-Ross, you can Google this, you can get a lot more information. This really all research had started many decades, frankly, ago um, about people going through a loss, particularly of a loved one. But really, this is not just the loss of a loved one. We've all lost. We've lost our, a sense of certainty, our, a sense of security, a sense of knowns, a sense of, 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 and all of that brings on all these same feelings. So. If we go left to right, it starts with denial. Oh, this isn't really happening. I mean, it's really not that bad. I mean, we're, it's, 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 in fact, I, I, no, this is, this is, this is just going to be, everybody's just confused. After denial, it goes into anger. Really frustrated. I'm really pissed off this is happening. I didn't invite coronavirus to come. I mean, I didn't have even corona at all. There was no beer whatsoever. I just wanted wine. It was a wine and a uh, cocktail party, okay? But anger is a real feeling that sets in. The bargaining then starts to happen. This is where, where well, maybe it's not, I, I don't know. I mean, um, you, you just struggle to find meaning after you get through some of this anger. You start to reach out to others. You want to talk. There's a lot of people just needing to talk. And this is part of this process. Um, depression, then, I mean, it, it keeps happening, right? Because the loss has not abated. It, it, we haven't bounced back. And so if you're feeling depressed, this thing of, you know, it, it could be everything from I'm just overwhelmed and I want to shut down and not get out of bed to I, I'm getting aggressive. Um, that's a form and a behavior that comes out of depression. And then if we, it, and if you can keep through this, the last part of this cycle is a, a, some form of acceptance. And acceptance doesn't mean, by the way, that coronavirus is a great thing. That's not what it means at all. Or that a loss of a loved one is a great thing. Or having these restrictions about going outside is a great thing. No, it doesn't mean we accept that this is a great thing. We simply accept that what is, is. And we start exploring options. And I got to think, to some level, each of you are, are feeling this or experiencing this acceptance because otherwise you wouldn't be here right now, okay? And so I, I give you credit for that. Now, I saw another graphic as well that really looks at the stages of grief. This has, takes a little bit more in terms of from loss of, of and hurt to some adjustment, what happens, um, and some of those feelings. So it, you know, it's equivalently the same, but I wanna share with you that this is actually how it sometimes can feel like. We're just bouncing all over the place. So, so, so the thing is this, 
The stages of grief look all nice and kind of pretty, right? One stage to the next. I don't say pretty, but right. The reality is, and what the research shows is, we don't cleanly go from one stage to the next. We bounce all over the place. So if you are feeling angry one moment and then accepting or feeling like, okay, I can figure this out. I can do it the next. And then let's say something else happens, like in the state of Virginia, just yesterday, our governor said, we're going to have, uh, we, he wants a ban on uh all rest not just restaurants that's the one that hits me the most right anyway um all non-essential businesses to uh not be open has been extended to june 10th now i don't say this at all for any political thing this is complete or, or our assessment if it was right or wrong all i'm saying is i heard that and my immediate response was anger <laughs> was like what okay so because so i could bounce back to anger and then i gotta figure out bargaining and kind of you know i gotta figure that out so the so the reason i say that is because one thing can change in the external environment and all of a sudden we're back to a, another stage in the uh a, a, of the stages of grief and experiencing loss so this is perfectly normal um but here's why i want to share this with you is because your clients are going through the same thing and one of the biggest things that we can do, what would Wonder Woman do? I think what Wonder Woman would do is, is, to, is to say, I need to take, and I'm going back here, I'm going to take an assessment. I'm going to continue to take an assessment. Ask myself, where am, where am I right now? How am I feeling in this grief cycle? Give yourself permission to be there because guess what? You can't deny it anyway. It's going to happen. And ask yourself, where am I? And what do I might need to do for myself right now in this moment? to help me through to a next stage of this cycle. Because I'd like to move towards, everything you want to move towards is this thing of the acceptance of what is right now and exploring options and figuring out a plan B, a plan C, et cetera, okay? The other is, is to know that every time you reach out to a client, to a prospect, to talk to someone, they're somewhere on this cycle too. And one of, it, particularly if you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's through like a Zoom and, and it's, it's virtual a video networking or whether it's on the phone, um, in particular, in the moment, ask them, how are you doing? How are you feeling right now? Because you need to understand, this is a service to them too, where they are in that moment, in that grieving cycle. And if they're in anger, you, 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 you know, you don't want to just say, oh, well, well, let's explore those options right now of how to get rid of that anger. You want to acknowledge it. You don't necessarily have to stay there with them. But here's the other thing. It's not only for yourself, but for your clients. Where are you at in this cycle? And accept the reality that you can't not go through this cycle. And so the best thing to do, and what I'm trying to do is, Knowledge where I'm at and help process through and help myself do what I need to do now to get to that next level or a different place, a more positive place on the cycle, and do what you can to help your clients as well. Sometimes asking the question, letting them be able to talk, and letting them um, brainstorm or letting them go, I need to reschedule our conversation because I just don't feel up to it. That's all that's needed. But it is to me, this is about surviving, and it's also about thriving, and we have to be realistic about our emotional state. And we're all, and then when people say we're all in this together, we are all in this together. So we're all grieving. We all are at different points of that grieving. The other idea is, is that crisis creates clarity. Now, ironically, this is the Chinese symbol for crisis. Don't know if you've seen this, you may have had in the past, but right now we're all going through a crisis. And so what I find interesting is to remind ourselves is that there's two symbols that make up the Chinese meaning of crisis, which is danger and opportunity. Think about that. Coexisting, danger and opportunity. This is some wisdom here that says, as you know, in the midst of the danger of, of threats to our health, and the danger to the threats to our business's well-being, there are also, at the same time, opportunity. 
Now, I think there's sometimes, you know, if you're Zoom or you're Logitech or you're um, a web company or, if, or even anyone who's doing online work to help businesses, this is a true opportunity. And it's, when I say true, it's the surface. It's the obvious. It's the one that makes complete sense. From those of us who do not have those kind of businesses, there is hidden opportunity. We have to maybe look deeper. It may not show up as clearly yet, but if we look and if we believe there is opportunity to use our expertise and what we know how to do and the problems that we solve for other people, and we ask ourselves and we just say, and we even brainstorm, what are some opportunities here? then I think that they can happen, but you have to, that you can see them, but you have to be able to look at both or acknowledge both at the same time. I was looking at the word crisis the other day, up here, C-R-I-S-I-S, -I -S, you know, and I saw this C, it's like the, there's a letter C, but how about the eyes that see? And, you know, and, and, and then there's I-S-I-S, -I -S, is, is. And I thought we have to see what is is versus not what we want it to be. There's something to me about, about that, but the clarity that crisis can bring is what's most important now. We've heard that for years. Do what's most important for our business. Spend time with those who are most important to us. Reach out, really connect, say the things that are most important. Do the, take care of our finances and our financial well-being. Do the things that are most important. And oftentimes we really don't because it's not screaming in our face. Crisis creates the clarity of what's the most important to us now. And that is a blessing in a way. What we're seeing is a lot of people also just letting go of things that aren't as important. Um, and frankly, they quickly diminished in their importance in, in, a, in a crisis. So um, there is that somewhat that silver lining of clarity because when you have clarity, clarity creates power. Clarity can give you some sense of some certainty. When you're like, I'm clear on what's important, I'm clear what's important now, then you can feel more confident in doing something about it. How are you going to overcome the fear overall? I think what Wonder Woman would do is she would say, take action. To me, that is the best way to overcome fear and uncertainty. It's to not just take one action, but take multiple actions. And by the way, that doesn't mean it's got to be a huge action. It might be some days the biggest action you take in that moment is getting out of bed. Is putting on an alarm still, creating a routine, keeping to that routine and saying, I could sleep in. But no, I'm not going to. I feel a bit depressed, but I'm going to get out of bed. But there are other things you also can do to overcome fear. You can say, uh, take action. I'm going to learn how to use Zoom now. I'm going to learn other capabilities of virtual networking that I haven't done before. I'm going to, there's all kinds of things you can learn to do that you, ha you need to learn how to do now. I feel that way. I'm going to understand my finances much better. I'm going to clean out my closet right? Um, I'm going to, there's, taking action is, will, and will continue to be a way, small, medium, large actions. Sometimes the action is going to be, I need to give myself a break. I need to go outside and um, walk around. That's action. So notice when you're fearing, fearful, uh, feeling fearful and say, what's one thing I can just do right now? And it's movement. Um, you know, some of you know I'm a recovering engineer, but you don't have to be an engineer to know this very true scientific fact. A ball in motion, something in motion is much easier to, uh, to change and to modify and make direction change if it stays in motion. So staying in motion in some way is so important. And what I mean by that, it's emotion, it's emotional state. Um, for getting, getting out of fear, getting out of fear, getting out of fear, because fear will always keep you stuck. And that's why it's important to take some kind of action. Okay, so you didn't come this far to only come this far. You didn't build your business this far, do all this work just to have Corona's virus say, stop, it's over, you know, mic drop, no. 
I, I'm not personally going to give up. I don't think you are either, because if not, if you had, you wouldn't even be on this call and, and on the Zoom session. So I want to give you some real specific ideas to keep going, keep dreaming, keep scheming in your business. We've talked about the emotional state and the perspective. And if you don't have that, it's very difficult to look at practical uh, approaches and solutions for your business. So that's why I wanted to cover that first. Um, and I want to share with you some, some deeper dives on three areas. As I've looked at all the different things one could do for your business, strategically, I think here's three things that we all need to do. And, and what's what, what I'm doing for my business. We need to recalibrate, we need to review, and we need to re-energize and continue to stay re-energized. We, we need to keep doing these three things. I like to, when, I'm in, when things get really messy, when things get really confusing, when things are really coming at me at all sides, I like to like get it all. I feel like, ah, what do I do? I don't know. I need clarity. And so being able to put the, something into three simple but also powerful buckets in a strategy um, is what I was uh, working for myself on and sharing with my clients. So Here's, let's look at each one of these. What is recalibrate really? What do I mean by that? Okay, first off, what I'm recommending to all of my clients and what I'm doing is I'm going, I need to look at my business plan for the next 90 days. I need to recalibrate what I had at the beginning of the year and how I've been running my business and what that model is needs to change. And we all can come up with a time frame. Oh, maybe it's 30 days. You know, last week I said, maybe it's 30 days. Maybe it's 60 days. I've just made a decision and I recommend you seriously consider this too. Look at Q2. Look at the next 90 days. Say, I'm going to look at, at and, and I don't know. We don't know if it's going to go another 90 days. But we are going to understand that as we get closer to the next 90 days. I would much rather say, all right, if I'm going to give myself some certainty, some parameters to work within, I'm going to give 90 days because I think it's totally realistic. And this, by the way, was before our governor in Virginia said June 10th. By the way, that date might change. All these things can change. But if I've recalibrated, recalibrated how I'm going to approach building my business, continuing it for it to survive for the next 90 days, and I make it in such a way that I feel okay, this seems doable. I can make this happen. And things get better sooner, not a problem. I can recalibrate again. But I would much rather think that this is going to be 90 days worth of really getting smart and hunkering down, okay? And what I mean by that, I don't mean like go, go off and, and, and not do anything, just the opposite. But a 90-day window is what I would look at. Then the other thing is, is to talk to your top clients, okay? And you may have done this already, but a lot of people go, and, and you, when you have to look at recalibrating your business model, you've got to know, you've got to easily go, well, what do people want? What do people need? I don't really know. It's always been a good practice to reach out and keep in touch, particularly with your top clients. Why your top clients? Because number one, yeah, they're bringing in probably the most revenue. Top is usually they're, they're spending the most with me. They're bringing, bringing in the most revenue. But they're top also because oftentimes they are in the sweetest spot of the problems that you solve. And they are your ideal clients. You would love to replicate them. So I've been recommending to my uh, coaching clients, make a list of at least five to seven of your top clients. You might have more, you might have less, but you can't talk to one or two. You've got to at least get a trend. That's why I say at least five to seven. And if you haven't already, reach out and, tr and try to get a phone conversation with them or a virtual conversation like this. Being able to have a face-to-face. -face. And here's three questions that I've been recommending that you ask. One, how are you doing? Let them answer it however they want, personally, business-wise, however they want. Listen for where they are on the grief cycle. Two, what are your biggest concerns now? What are your biggest concerns? Now, if they and let them answer however they want. If they haven't a answered it in a way that what are their biggest business concerns, ask them that as a follow-up. What are the three biggest concerns? Or the, the, the biggest, you don't have to have three, but what are the biggest concerns right now you have for your business? And be really, really actively listening. 
to how they are talking about their problems now. You knew their problems before, they're a top client, but really, what does that look like now? And the third question is, how can I help? You may not be able to help with their new problem. I, I don't know, you don't know. But you also may be able to recommend something and someone or resource. Just the offer to help goes a long way. We all build businesses based on relationships, even if they start online and even if they start through a click, it'll still come down to something like this. And we need to remember these are people. We need to remember they're going through everything they are too. We don't know all of what's going on in their head and what they're experiencing. So reach out and talk to them to find that out and, um, and, and show that you care. What you want to be looking for and why you want to have more than one or two or even three would be the minimum. What are the trends of the problems and their concerns now? What are their biggest concerns now? Because this is where you start to get the ideas to brainstorm of, okay, those are the problems I need to figure out how to help them with now if I can. Those are the things that I need to think about doing differently. And from there, it's about adjusting what you offer. Most of us are offering services. Some of us have a product in there as well, a hard physical product, okay? And it might be a mix, but most of us are looking at this, even if it's a product, it's, it, it has a service component. You have to, you're gonna have to adjust and, at what you offer. You're gonna have to adjust how you talk about what you offer. It has to be in the context of the crisis. And you have to speak to the emotion of that and otherwise you know it, it it you won't connect and you've got to break through a lot of the ah what's happening which by the way there's always been ah what's happening but now it's so you know it hasn't all necessarily been a shared crisis and so you have to talk about it in that way one of the things i've been telling my clients is put a, a sticky note on your computer or somewhere you're going to see it and ask yourself and use this phrase now more than ever as a way to stimulate. Now more than ever, dot, dot, dot. You know, I could say for my own clients and, and women entrepreneurs, now more than ever, we have to recalibrate our business model to make it work for thriving in today's environment. To so use that phrase as a way to stimulate now more than ever about your messaging. And you have to really adjust either what you charge or how you charge or payment plans or something different. We're seeing a lot of companies who are coming up with special offers, packages, that type of thing now, and they're not doing it just to be cutesy. They're trying to do it to be helpful. How can you change the economics of cash flow for your clients to still be helpful, to still be affordable for them to still be clients? So that's, that to me are the th three essentials about recalibrating. Um, everyone's recalibrating, and we can know from this headline uh, from Richmond Times-Dispatch, it's been in other websites, Walmart is seeing a rise in tops, not bottoms. <laughs> Why is that? Because people are recalibrating to virtual events like this, okay? I'm not going to make you all stand up right now and see if your bottoms even match your tops, okay? I'm not, but if you don't think there's adjustment going on already. Of course there are, and it's showing up even with large companies. All right, we need to have some levity through this whole thing too. I'm gonna give you an example though of adjusting. This is one of my clients, Chef Tammy Brawley. She owns the Green Kitchen here in Richmond, Virginia. Some of you know her, some of you have eaten her delicious food. She is a personal chef, and she also does catering, and she also has private event space. Now as a personal chef, um, that sounds like all oh, fancy pants, but here's the thing. There are a lot of people she focuses in particular, she has a specialty on people who have special need diets, like either, you know, gluten-free or, um, uh, or vegan or plant-based. In particular, she's doing a lot of plant-based foods and people don't, meals and people aren't, either they haven't had the time in the past or don't know how. And so um, she has been doing where she would drop off, she would create a weekly basis. Here's all your meals for the week, drop them off, and you'd eat, you know, it happened through the week. That was one of the services that she offered. Well, now, guess what? People are spending a lot more time at home, and you would think like, oh, well, they couldn't afford that. Actually, here's what she's adjusting. 
She has more personal client shifts than ever right now um, because of popularity of plant-based, because of the health area, right? We all have to stay incredibly healthy right now, our immune systems. In addition, this whole environment um, now has impacted all restaurants. We all know we can't go to a restaurant anymore. Yeah, and now restaurants are starting to do takeout, but she was early on to say, I, uh, particularly the first weekend where the coronavirus really set in and you couldn't go to a restaurant, she offered a Friday to Saturday um, two meal special. It wasn't necessarily about plant-based, it was just like, and she looked at what was in her refrigerator and her freezer and what she could make. She used those resources and offered that, and she sold out <laughs> what she could make um, for two days. That's the kind of thing she adjusted her model. She can't do private events right now in her private event space, all right? So that is kind of temporarily on hold. Um, catering also, she could do catering, but hey, it's only 10 people or less. What kind of party is that? So she's deciding that some of the things that she's been offering just don't make sense right now. She can't, people can't take advantage or do that. So she's doubling down on the thing that people have been using and she still can do, which is personal chef and home delivery, and now she's saying now more than ever, dot, 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 how she is positioning, same capabilities. And so I just want to give you a real example of that. And by the way, that's the food that she's made. It is that good. And when I do my retreats, my uh, Rev Up Accelerator retreat, I have Tammy come in and she's our personal chef for two and a half days. And I am telling you, it is like the smartest thing I've ever done. <laughs> And people love, love, love it. But um, it's, it's, that's how good she is and, um, and how much I love to have her. So here's another one of my clients. I'm going to give you another example of adjusting and recalibrating. This is Emily Davis, and she has a marketing agency for small business. It's called Link House Consultants. And so what she's doing, and she really, her ideal client is um, small and emerging business, emerging bit new businesses. Okay. So maybe a business has been up one to two years or wants to now get up online. Maybe they've only had a retail or a brick and mortar type of space. And they kind of had a website that was just like brochure wear. Now they've got to make their website work more for them. And so what she's decided to do is she had this all along, but she said, I've done a website review, which is like an audit. How would it, cause she, cause people's websites have to work now for them more than ever. So, so small businesses that are looking at what do I need to do now with my website, she is doing a reduced price for that review. Instead of 250, it's 175. She'll review it all. She'll go over the results and she'll say, customize to you. Here are the top things I recommend you do immediately now more than ever. Okay. And then if the people say, I would love you to do this for me, let's go forward. What would that look like? She creates a custom proposal and then she applies what people have already invested in this review towards that additional work. Okay. Smart, 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 smart. But it was an adjustment because before we talked, she wasn't focusing on this website review. Nah, you know, it wasn't very sexy at the time. You know, people instead were going like, I, I, you know, I want a really splashy brand, which she can still do, by the way. Um, I want, um, I want to figure out how to get wi uh, video on my website, which she can still do, by the way. But now more than ever, you got to look at really, instead of the flashy stuff or the things you'd like to do, what's most important now for your website? So those are just two examples. Number two, and is the, the review part. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to recalibrate. You're going to make some adjustments. You're going to try it out. And some of it's going to work really well. Some of it is not going to work at all. Most of it's going to be in between. This is my mantra. Fail fast, learn, move on. What do I mean? I don't mean like fail, like the whole business is going to fail. I mean this. We can't be afraid of failure or disappointment or things not working quite right when we are adjusting. We, and so the idea is, Come up with something that makes the most sense to you now, talking with, with your clients, put it out there, and you have to monitor and say, is this working? Is this really working? Not just, is, uh, is it connecting with people? Is it, are they saying, yes, that's fantastic. If it's not, figure that out fast. Learn what you need to do differently. Let go of the failure and move on. Keep moving is another way. Keep adjusting. So you, this is the idea of a of, of more frequent review. And it, 
these days, it might be every day, that might be a little bit anxious. So at least every week, what's working? What's not working? What do I need to adjust? Small tweaks are much easier. That whole thing of an of a object in motion is easier to redirect than something that's not moving at all. This is the idea. Small tweaks, small tweaks, small tweaks. And by the way, don't worry about how it looks to other people. Worry about if it's connecting with your clients. Worry about now more than ever, here's what I've learned. Here's what I need to know. Because you guess what? No one's going to remember anyway. <laughs> But this is something that has always been true to review our business, how it's working, you know, why do I need to change it? But in a crisis, we need to really focus in on this and do it more than ever. This is how we continue to stay current and relevant and have our best chance of surviving and thriving. The last part of the three, it's not the last one, the third one I want to share with you, I think is really strategic to do, is to re-energize. You can't just energize once and be done with it. It's continuing to re-energize. Now, with that, I want to say you got to figure out what works for you. Y you just do, right? So, so for some, it's, you know, we can't go to the spa anymore. Stephanie Burrs, who co-owns the Float Zone, my favorite thing to do to chill out, they, they're, I can't go float because there's a health concern with that, all right? So, so, so you, sometimes you got to come up with a plan B, a plan C. I, I think you got to figure out what's good for you, and, and I would recommend something that you can re-energize where you can just do it yourself, by yourself, and something with others. There's different kinds of energy. Some of us are more introverted. Some of us are more extroverted. A lot of people are, are a combination of almost half and half. They're called ambiverts, by the way. Um, but also in any time on that grief cycle, you might feel a time more to be alone to re-energize or a more time to reach out to be energized. Now, I want to share with you, there's two kind of go-tos for me personally, and, and I want to see if they connect with you to re-energize. One, um, oh, before I do that, I want to share with you, here's another client, as this is a resource. Dr. Jess Norris um, gave seven stress relief tips on her website, drjessnorris.com. You can see it on there. Um, and some of the ones, I, I printed it out so I could look at it right now, was... Um, Set limits around social news and social media. Acknowledge your feelings. We've talked about that some. Maintain your day-to-day -day normal activities when possible. Having some kind of self-imposed schedule that you'd say, I I'm going to stick to. And her last was to stop buying all the toilet paper, which I really appreciate her humor, but also that's practical. Okay, people, I'm down to two rolls. You can just send them to me in the mail if you want or talk to me later. But I got a lot of tissue boxes, so I'm not freaking. I got a plan, all right? Humor is one of my personal faves to stress release. It's like an instant vacation in the moment. And I just, well, you've seen this on Facebook, which is great, all right? Which is the good part uh, of Facebook. So if you, if you like more of the funny things, by the way, you get more of the funny things, all right, on, on a Facebook stream. Here's one I saw recently. I just put chase and put photos I thought was really great. Somebody got really creative and bored. So let's about little funny things they can do, you know, with the extra toilet paper they have, um, rolls they have on hand. This one was kind of funny, you know. This one, you know, was kind of hilarious. And, you know, one of my faves, Groovy Man. We got the groovy toilet paper. I mean, these are just things that when you're feeling stressed, you can go look for these things. They're all over the place when you look for them. So, um, we looked at, and, and this idea of recalibrate, review, and re-energize. I want to show you something that's been my overall solution or my overall approach with clients uh, with, um, who are women entrepreneurs. And I call this seven steps to revving up your own business, to revving up your business, thrown on your cape. And, and it goes like this. After I've talked with someone, it's, it's really about you've got to know what are the problems you solve and who you solve them for, who you impact. That's what people pay us for. We know that, but we have to continually ask, what are the problems with my ideal client now? And, and has my ideal client changed? Um, but it always starts there. What problems you solve for whom? And recalibrating around that. And it's around, uh, and then from that, then what's my plan, my business model, my overall plan of what are my products and services that bring in, that have the most potential right now for revenue and 
um, what are my, what I call revenue generating activities? What are the ways that I'm going to promote it, market it, share it, et cetera, and simplify it so it's not too many. Um, I see my clients no more than three revenue buckets. When we look at our businesses now, I bet you, even before coronavirus in the BC world, that was, that was true. There's only so many buckets to bring in most of the revenue for your business. And some of them, so it's the big ones. Then you got to work it, right? You got to implement those reach out plans. You got you to gotta do your marketing. You got to follow up. I like to say, work it. Work it real good. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Revenue, real revenue, me, should come from that. And then this learn, review, and adjust. So this, these seven steps um, were true in the BC world. They're true today, but here's what I want to show you is if in today's world, what happens when you don't really do get a good grip on the clarity of you're not really clear on the problems you solve today, who you impact today, and you don't have a simplified plan to survive through the next 90 days? What happens? You become irrelevant. And you're a tired squirrel. You're, you're probably doing a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things. Please, we got to survive, we got to survive. But you're just becoming tired by doing that. You're feeling desperate. You're feeling anxious. You go on Facebook and, and every, you know, and I get on my scroll, probably like you, same on LinkedIn, uh, other, uh, in my email box. Here's the thing that's going to save the day. All right. Maybe for you, maybe not. But do not do all of them. You can't. You couldn't before. You can't necessarily in now, but this is what you risk if you don't get clear on the problems you solve for whom and you create a simplified plan. They also, what if you don't really implement your plan? If you, once you create it, you don't get at it every day in an environment that is wanting you to just kind of stay in bed or bum you out. If you don't get at it every day and you keep it, you're going to disappear kind of on your, on the, on the landscape of what your ideal clients and, and being in front of them and, and not just being in front, but being a, a trusted resource. I mean, there are going to be businesses that will disappear completely because of this. Because I think personally, because they haven't, they're not doing anything shape or form of what we're talking about right now. Even you, even when you um, create a, a new simplified plan, if you don't, work at it and work through the times when of that fail fast learn and move on and keep adjusting you, you're, you're kind of just not going to be visible when i say disappear you're, you're not going to be visible to your ideal clients and then if you don't learn re review learn and adjust you're going to quickly get out of touch and you're going to go broke that's I don't know how to say it any, any more simply and i don't want to shock anybody but let's face it if 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 we're not really hitting the mark or, or and, and recalibrating and continuing to touch it, to touch base um, and, and be in to have a pulse on how things are changing for our ideal client and how we need to adjust, we're going to get out of touch sooner. And it's going to impact our bottom line a lot sooner. So that's why I say that. Um, I used to say in the BC world, if you didn't review, learn, and adjust, you're going slow broke. Now I should say, you're going to go fast broke, <laughs> okay. and we don't want that. This is um, Lisa Dearden of Chicken Egg, uh, and as well as RV Agriculture. She is also in the Richmond, Virginia region. Some of you know her as well. This is her commercial kitchen. I want to share with you so, something, uh, one thing she has done to, um, to recalibrate. She runs seven now, seven farmer's markets in the region. Farmers markets would be all geared up right now to be excited about opening. They can't. She doesn't know when they're going to open. It's not just you and me being able to go to the farmers market, having that great experience and getting fresh produce. It's all the farmers who use farmers markets as a key distribution system for their own businesses. So there's a lot that she feels like I got to figure out a solution. And so she went to work on this, um, and she realized very quickly this is going to be a big problem, and this was about two weeks ago. She just this week announced and was able to launch 
and it's in its early stages an online farmers market system for all the seven farmers markets that she in, in our region and so it, it will be the capability for people to create an account order stuff and then have a pickup spot all right for that to happen that major readjusting and recalibrating um, of business and i'm very proud of her and she because it's not only the chutzpah and and the a action but it's also it's her heart what drove her is i really don't want i really want these businesses to survive she's a true huge believer this will pass meaning the coronavirus crisis and not being able to come in person um and and in the process we can't let our farmers down we can't let that local resource disappear because they go out of business that's also what's at stake i'm very proud of her on that one kim ely is on this call right now and she didn't know i was going to do this but i wanted to highlight something she's doing to recalibrate and adjust now here's the cool thing Kim is she helps people write books and then um, and get them published. All right. So if you've ever thought about writing a book, now is a great time to write a book. Okay. Um, you might have a little extra time. It's also very po positive and productive. And for your business, what could be a book? And it doesn't have to be 250 pages. All that kind of stuff. All varieties. Well, here's the point: is that she um, she's had some retreats and she's uh, you know things are in person. Well, a couple, several months ago. One of her goals for 2020 was to have an online publish uh, course and, and, and group. To, and so it's called Personally Published. And she was launching it just as this all was happening. But one of the things she's so, you could say perfect timing, how smart is Kim? Well, yeah, she is smart. Um, the crisis uh, just adds on the level of, wow, this might be now more than ever is when I'm gonna do this. But what she had to adjust and what she is still doing is her marketing messaging. So if she just said, I bet you always wanted to write a book, oh, I don't say that, in a, you know, things, but before, before Corona, you know, um, or she had a messaging about um, you, everyone has a book inside of them and I help, you know, people get it out. Those are, those are messages, but in a coronavirus world, this is, do you, you know, you always wanted to write that book, now is the time to do it fast forward that through the coronavirus. So you have it ready and done when this is over. That's the kind of messaging. Her offer doesn't need to change. What she's doing with this, she needs to focus on this more because it is an online offer. And she needs to, she needs to frame it in uh, why you'd want to do this now more than ever because of corona, okay? So with all of these recalibrate, review, re-energize, my question to you is, what do you need more of when you assess your state of business if you would write that in the chat box right now what do you need more of just so we can just share it and i can also say, i'd love to get your feedback and you can say any more clients any more clients i realize that but i mean <laughs> what would what do you need more of now in terms of recalibrating what i shared there reviewing uh uh, and, and getting that feedback um, or re-energizing. I'm seeing right now, recalibrate came from you, Stella. Um, I've seen that a couple of times. Uh, Mike, some structure, that's honest, all right. Lift the health ban, I'm with you on that one. Recalibrate, uh, planning and scheduling tips, okay, got it. All right, I can see already the brainstorming is starting to happen of how this can um, impact you, clarity and focus. All right, Ellen, that's, that's great reviewing. Great, okay. So um, I can see um, you need all of them, uh, which is basically what I'm hearing. Uh, and then you get real specific, you know, tips on how to navigate social media from Holly. Now, see now, that's a also, that's a recalibrating. I need to do what, you know, Holly and her team you do makeup. So how does she do that in an online world? She told me once that she already has some things, but how does she need to do that more? She probably, I know she has the capability to virtually let them know about that. And so how does she show that on, on, on social media or how can she get smarter about that? Right. Yeah, Jana, um, you said you're not physically able to massage clients. That's a problem, right? Um, 
So do you massage it this way? Do you try to replace that? Or do you say, now what is the problem I'm really solving? Is it about relaxation? Uh, is, as an esthetician, is it about skincare? Um, can I help try to solve that problem in a virtual world in a new way? That's the kind of thing that you start then having um, to brainstorm. Hey, um, Daisy is saying she's seriously considering going back to teaching belly dancing and samba. Not, um, why not? It's a skill set you have, girl, right? I mean, you could so improve the 30 second dance party, I'm just saying, all right? Because um, uh, uh, you know, belly dancing has not been in my belly wick. All right. Thank you for sharing all of that and what you need more of. I want to share with you something that I'm doing that I thought, what can I do to help the clients I'm working with uh, to continue to help them and to open it up to help others. And so I want to share with you uh, about this Rev Up Society that it already started, but how I'm adjusting it. And I've come up with this uh, 90 day special membership. Normally it's a 12 month in uh, investment of time and commitment. We don't know what's going to happen for 12 months. Okay. So I thought that doesn't make any sense. It, it was an in person as well as a virtual experience. Hey, hey, we can't meet in person. So what can we do virtually? How can we adjust it? Also, um, what, what can I do to help with this reviewing, to help you recalibrate, review, stay re-energized? And so I want to share it with you uh, and go over it with, for those who are interested in maybe saying this might be a good solution. I want to preface this by saying, if you go to, you can see the website up here, uh, maryfoley.com, and you can actually click on um, under coaching if you want to do under that. You'll see this uh, page, get through Q2 with the RevUp Society. Um, it's also um, on the homepage. Well, it will be um, after today's uh, um, uh, webinar. But uh, I want to walk this, I want to walk through this. I want to answer any questions. And I want you to know this. This isn't like Mary's big pitch. This is my way of going, I really want to see women entrepreneurs businesses survive through the next 90 days, be stronger because of it, to come out either stronger in your head, about, stronger in your strategy, um, and, be, and be as things loosen up, hit the ground running even harder, faster, okay? It's that type of thing, that, that's it. So this is um, something I've thought a lot about of what's involved in this, what has to go, what I put in, and, affordability. So um, here is what it is. It, it, you can, you know, you can scroll through this whole thing. I do want to say you are not wearing that red cape for nothing. I mean that. All right. If it's in the closet. Get it out. If you're like, Mary, I don't really have a real red cape. You all have a virtual red cape. All right. And so um, it, it's there. You, it's a decision to throw it on. So when I think of this recalibrate, review, re-energize, you know, what we've just talked about is, um, is very, is, it's still there, it's very true. Um, what we're gonna do though, specifically in the Rev Up Society, get you through, get through Q2 is, uh, I'm gonna work with everybody to create a revised revenue plan with updated products and services. We talked about doing, you know, the need to do that. And I'm sure all of you have already started in some way to do that. We, you know, it's drilling down further um, with that and getting feedback on that. Also, looking at your marketing and messaging. How does that need to be refined? What are some specific messaging that you can come up with? Um, and, and helping you with that. Get full clarity on your expenses. You have to recalibrate the dollars as well. And one of the things is, is that I'm, I'm gonna, I ha, I've created a very simple spreadsheet that'll look at your, the, the forecast for the next 90 days, what's your revenue and also what are your expenses. Do not assume that you're just going to add more expenses on what you, uh, for the next 90 days. Some things probably need to go away. And if you're like, Mary, I, I really don't have a whole list of my expenses right now. I'm not really sure exactly that dollar figure. Guess what? It don't matter because that's BC anyway. We're looking at right now. You need to get a grip on a full clarity. I don't say a grip. I say just a full clarity. So that you can be super smart about what to let go of, what to minimize, what to, um, to, to you know, maybe get some different payment arrangements uh, if need be. Um, and also look ahead, super smart about forecasting your cash flow. So that's a lot of recalibration, but those are the different pieces. It's about what you're offering, it's also about your finances. 
we're also going to be doing a continual review process uh, and also ways to re-energize. And one of the ways to re-energize is to plug into a group of women entrepreneurs. People are going through the same thing you are. I don't know about you, but I'm living with, you know, Bill, and I love him to death. And some of the stuff I go through, he don't get. Some of the stuff he goes through, I don't completely get. But I can just say it as it is to a group of trusted women entrepreneurs. That's what we've already been doing in the Rev Up Society. I am really think, and more than ever, we all need a group like that, all right? You've got to figure out where that is for you. Um, Rev Up Society might be a place for you in the next 90 days. So this membership, I'm going to scroll down. Here's exactly what you get in, in it and what I'm going to do. Three virtual mini workshops to recalibrate your business. I'm going to do one on um, what problems you solve for whom. Looking at that, and we're doing that as a group. Very interactive. We're going to use Zoom. I know. Breakout rooms. It's going to be crazy how I'm going to do it. Um, but it's going to be, uh, and we're going to have breaks so you don't get Zoom ass, that type of thing. Um, we're going to do that in the early part of, of well, actually next week. We're look, I'm looking at that to, to do that. Recalibrating your um, marketing and messaging. And what are some of the things that you really need to do with that? Reviewing that as a group, getting feedback, getting feedback, fast forwarding that, as well as Ellen McElhaney, who's on this call right now, already in the Rev Up Society. She's a CFO. We got some smart gals part of this thing, girlfriend. Anyway, I asked her, would she be willing to do a, a, a session virtually about cash flow forecasting? She said, absolutely. That's also the generosity and the support from rev up members, society members. So all of these are gonna be, you know, uh, I, I encourage everyone to say, do it live, but they're all gonna be recorded. Because also, we want the recording if you need to replay and look at that again. So those are what we wanna do. I'm gonna do those in the very first part of Q2, which by the way, Q2 happens on April 1st, April Fool's Day, how ironic. I'll just let that lie. Um, to, for the, for, to take the group stuff and also to drill down, everybody needs one-on-one -on -one time. That's what I've always found. I just want to talk about me, marry me. I get it. You need special attention. That's why I'm doing twice a month personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with me here with Zoom recorded. And by the way, my 60-minute sessions are now 50-minute sessions so that I have 10 minutes to get up, and go to the bathroom, and get some more coffee and sit down for the next 50 minutes. Okay. All right. Then laser coaching when you need it. So you know, you don't have to always wait for the next session. So this is where you can reach out to me for a quick 15 minute or less laser coaching session. The thing is moving. Um, monthly Rev Up Society social uh, society virtual rendezvous. Right. So um, what we're going to do is this is we're going to have two a couple of kinds to get together. One once a month. This is going to be all about what's working. What are some of the wins? We need to keep celebrating wins. We need to keep sharing what's working. We need to also keep helping each other what, what problems or what speed bumps. And so we're able to do that through Zoom, be able to have a kind of a group, uh, you know, chiming in, but also break out in the group of two or three using breakout rooms on, uh, on, on Zoom. RGA challenge. Those who want to, I'm a, this, is, this is how do I keep it, you know, work it, work it every day. I'm a huge proponent and have been for years, ever since I started one uh, personal group, small group coaching, because it has been a game changer for me. And I do not see this often uh, with other group options or other coaching, which they say we're going to have accountability. I'm talking about every day. We're going to say Monday through Friday. That's the structure. You are committing. You're saying, I'm going to really work my plan. I'm going to really continue to work, reach out, even when I don't want to. And I'm going to post these three things, revenue generating activities, three things every day up on the, the Facebook group that we have. We are already doing this. I have been doing three or more RGAs every day for my business while on vacation for the last four years. I'm just as accountable to it everyone in Rev Up Society. I post it every day as well. It's really cool to see what other people are doing and give a lot of likes and shares and comments and it keeps you energized. We're going to have a private Facebook group. Well, that is now. You would join and be a part of that where you, of course, can post anything you want, ask questions. And because we've got to keep that energy up, I want to do uh, Rev Up Society virtual happy hours. I already started this. I want to continue it. Um, 
and we might have 30, you know, second dance parties. Uh, we, and, and you don't have to drink wine. One of my favorite beverages, of course. Drink whatever you want. The whole idea is to be happy for at least an hour every week, okay? So those are all the things that are included in it. Everyone's going, what does it cost, Mary? What does it cost? What's the big thing? All right, I'll just get right to it. I just decided I'm doing this a tenth of what I would normally charge, and that is $750 for 90 days. This is about get through Q2. So this is, this is your willingness to say I'm making a 90-day commitment to, to do this. For me, to be a part of a smaller group that is doing it, we're all in this. It's not just voluntary. Mary's, you know, Mary's the one that's going to slog it out with us. So it can be, you know, you, and it's spread it out. This to me is, um, I'm, I'm for everything that you do, it would cost way more if I charge my normal rates, but I'm not in normal times. All right, I got a quick question from uh, Barbara. I like to say that to you, Barbara. I don't know why I always say that to you. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quick do a stop share. I'm going to go to the question by Barbara. Let's see. I can't see. Mary, we can't see your slides. Slide hasn't moved. I'm not seeing anything. Well, that is why. Finally, Barbara's like, please, right? So you haven't seen anything I've put up there. Ugh. All right. Feel fast, learn to move on. Let me show you this now, girlfriend, then. I am going to bring it up. You didn't see any of this. So I am going to do it in a new chair right now. And then I'm going to ask you if you see it. It's right here. All right, so do you see this right now? If you do, please give me a big, uh, say something in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. See it, see it, see it. All right, so I'm going to rewind this tape. Um, this is the page I was trying to scroll you through because why create new slides when I can just show you this? Um, this is the Rev Up Society uh, to get you through Q2. Uh, membership offer. So I'm going to kind of fast forward so you can see this list about recalibrating, reviewing, and re-energizing um, the, all the things that I just mentioned. And if you go to maryfoley.com slash RevUpSocietyQ2, you can see this all. And I will include that in the comments as well. So let me do that. Uh, let's see. Let me Go ahead and in the chat box, I'll put it there um, for everyone. Um, I want to do it for everyone. So there we go. All right. So that I went ahead and put that also in the chat box, this URL. But th this, this shows um, to show you here are the three virtual mini workshops to recalibrate your business. So the first one on what problems you solve for whom now, um, that's going to be an interactive workshop. Then there's going to be one on calibra recalibrating your marketing and your messaging. Um, creating a realistic cash flow forecast for Q2. That's the one that um, is with uh, Ellen McElhaney, who is our uh, resident CFO uh, in the RevUp Society. Then this is the two, twice a month personal coaching sessions. So those are almost an hour long and a total of six sessions. And so the idea is these quick, not quick, but these really personal reviews, check-ins, what do we need to do next? Where are those things that, uh, for your business? A lot of times uh, I'll record them all. Sometimes there's just great ideas or phrasing and stuff that comes up. And so that's where the recording really plays, uh, takes a part. Laser coaching when you need it. Um, this is something that I've had other coaches say, oh my gosh, Mary, why do you do this? This is a time suck. And I'm like, I'm, I'm doing it because this is the thing. People need help when they need it. Uh, if someone does it so, 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 so much that it, I've, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'll let them know and we'll, we'll recalibrate that. But that hasn't been the case. Um, just knowing you can either pick up the phone, text me, email me, can we talk now? And what I do is I give you top priority. So as soon as I can, that's when we're, we, can, we can talk. Um, uh, you can also send me an email. We don't have necessarily a talk and ask me a question there. The social uh, rev up, the monthly rendezvous, this is about getting together and celebrating wins and helping each other through speed bumps. That RGA challenge, revenue generating activity challenge, that's what I said about posting three days a week. Um, the private Facebook group, which already exists, so you would be added to that. Um, 
and where all that posting of RGA Challenge, all the things that are happening, we get posted, you get some emails as well, uh, and then the virtual happy hour. Uh, and so with that, here, when you scroll down, you're going to see this, the investment, all right, during the corona crisis, cri coronavirus crisis um, is just for the 90 days. You're not looking past that. I wouldn't even recommend you necessarily look past that. Two fifty a month or seven fifty. You want to pay all at once? I'm not going to charge more if you to spread it out. Um, and I'm simply uh, asking you for to make that commitment. This will help me survive too, in my business. But more so, it's what I thought was the best thing for you. Now, with all that one on one, I can't only I can't offer it, but only so many people. So I'm doubling the size of my current Rev Up Society now by expanding it twenty four. Uh, women entrepreneurs max. So it's limited for Mary Sanity because there's only, you know, not so many dance breaks I can take to, to help manage it. So if you um, are not, those who are already in the society, um, you know, I already know are a good fit. And I've already had half of them say, yeah, I'm in for a next quarter, Mary, let's do this. For those of you who are not sure or let's make sure it's a fit, I'm asking you to click on the book now. And um, let's have a 30 minute conversation real quick to make sure it's a fit for me to hear more about your business. And then, um, you know, we're going to get started fast. So with that, um, I will take it off of stop and share and, uh, and ask, let's ask any questions that I've just shared about the Rev Up Society Q, get through Q2 membership or just any comments, period or questions that about what I've shared and, and your business. So with that, make sure you unmute yourself. Okay, um, and, uh, and then just jump right in.